One fellow says, what? He says, uh, LAC creates LAC, the Large Hadron Collider in CERN, Geneva, Switzerland. I've been there. And it looks nice from the outside. <laughs> LHC creates matter from colliding light based on E equals MC squared. People are so gullible. People are really gullible. Okay. So uh, uh, what does he say? He says, last year, the Atlas experiment at the LHC observed two photons. Uh, this came from, I think, from uh, the article that this follow reference. They observed, you know, observed, like with your eyesight, they observed two photons. Just zipping by them. Two photons. You observe the photons. You know, just going by. See, they use these words observed, and people swallow that like candy. You know, they say, okay, they observed it. Who's going who's gonna to question that if they observed it? What do you mean they observed? How can they observe two photons? What do they mean by observe? And that's what I'm going to get into, what they mean by observe, so that you see what that word means, how they cheat with that word, like they cheat with the word point and with the word circle. Here we have the word observe. Okay, let's see what observe means. They observe two photons, particles of light. So they observe two particles of light. Look at that. They got very good eyesight. Forget about, you know, Superman. I mean, his uh, x-ray vision, you know, comes out of the eyes, goes through the walls. <laughs> Ricocheting off one another and producing two new photons. So here they observed two photons. They collided, ricocheted uh, one from the other, and they turned into, uh, into what? Um, they, trend, they discovered, uh, where is it? Uh, and producing two new photons. Okay, so they bounced the need to produce two new photons. Let's see how they did this. How did they observe? How did they prove this? All this evidence, all these experiments that belong to science, right? Let's see how they did all this stuff. I, I want to know. Okay. This year, they've discovered photons merging and transforming into what? W bosos and particles that carry the weak force. There you see the poor uh, particle carrying the weak force, okay? Okay, what is, it, what is this guy referring to? So I look up the article that he referenced, and let's go there, let's find out what this is all about. Two photons, and they turned them into two more photons, and they observed the photons whizzing by. Let's find out how they did all this. Uh, I really want to know. Uh, I mean, science has advanced beyond my years. <laughs> okay, so you go, and you find it here. This is the article he referenced. It's, uh, the uh, magazine is known as Symmetry. It's run by what? Fermilab and Slack. What is Slack? Stanford Linear Accelerator. Okay, so these are big people. You know, they receive government funds. They, that means your money. You're paying for this, okay? And the article said, a collision of light. A collision of light. They're going to explain how light collided against light, uh, what we call light on light. Okay, Okay. let's find out what these folks did, how they did their experiment, how they observed a photon hitting another photon. Now, I'm going to go slowly here so that you get the whole picture Okay, of how they did this, how they proved that a photon collided against another photon. Okay, So this is the starting point. Okay. Keep track of this, okay? For most of the year, the LHC collides protons, okay? Proton allegedly is a little ball that's in the center of the atom, okay? Fine. But for about a month each fall, the LHC switches things up and collides what? Photons, maybe? Nah. They collide heavy atomic nuclei, such as lead ions. We're still talking about protons. In fact, here we're talking about protons and electrons. Uh, what they're saying is the ion, uh, that the atom is ionized, meaning that it lost... Uh, one of its uh, outer uh, electrons, okay? But here, they're going to collide what? First, they collided uh, protons, which are little balls in the center, and now they're going to collide what? Lead atoms, okay? In other words, they ionize, and that's what they're going to accelerate and collide. So far, we have nothing about photons. That's, what I, that's the point I'm trying to make here. These ion runs also enable scientists to turn the LHC into what? A photon-photon collider. Whoa. Okay, uh, so far we don't know how they did that. All we have is a statement, a claim, unjustified claim, unsubstantiated claim. Let's find out. This result demonstrates that photons can scatter off each other and change each other's direction. That's what they're going to show with this experiment, that uh, all these photons are bouncing off each other because they're, what, they're, what are they accelerating? Lead ions, lead ions, okay? That's, so far, that's all we have so far. So far they haven't justified the so-called photon. Okay, let's go to the uh, page number two. Really, uh, it was in one article, small article. Okay, and so this is how they continue in their description. When heavy nuclei are accelerated in the LHC, they are encased within an ele electromagnetic aura generated by their large positive charges. Okay, yeah, whatever charges are. As the nuclei travel faster and faster, their surrounding fields are squished into disks, making them much more concentrated. Okay, so far, again, uh, we're talking about atoms and nuclei, okay? We're talking about lead uh, nuclei, in, uh, in other words, lead ions. 
When two lead ions pass closely enough that their electromagnetic fields, a concept, right? There you see it at the bottom, uh, swoosh through one another. So we have the fields now going through each other, whatever field is. Never saw a field uh, swoosh through another one, okay? Uh, they'd, they'd have to draw that so we know what a field is. The high energy photons, which ultimately make up these fields, can interact. So here we have a magnet, right? I will show my two little magnets. There they are, okay? And you can see that. They, uh, they stick to one another, okay? So they're saying that what's in here is photons. That's the field, the magnetic field of a, of a uh, atom, ion, right? Is made of photons. That's what they're saying there, okay? That's how they're gonna turn this thing into, you know, colliding photons. They're gonna collide fields and the fields are made of photons. That's their argument, okay? In rare instances, a photon from one lead ion will merge with a photon from an, in, an oncoming lead ion, and they will ricochet in different directions. So now that we turn the field, which is made of photons, they say, we've never seen a field made of photons, but this is what they say, and now they, they simply state that the, these uh, uh, so-called photons, they bounce off each other. Okay, how does this thing uh, end? Here it is. Find out how gullible these people are that believe all this nonsense. Sorry, I meant idiocy. However, according to Steinberg, one of the fellows that uh, helped write this article, okay, or contributed, it's not as simple as two solid particles bouncing off each other. Oh, it's not. So it's not particles, which are not particles anyways in mathematical physics, especially in quantum. Light particles are both chartless and massless, okay, and must go through a quantum mechanical loophole to interact with one another. Okay, let's look at this loophole. How do they do this? They have no way to bounce off each other without help. Oh, we need the servants now. We need the help, okay? When the two photons see each other inside the LHC, they sometimes overreact with excitement and split themselves into an electron and positron pair. Okay, so now the two photons turn, each one turn into an electron positron pair. Now we have four of these, four particles, two electrons, two positrons, right? These electron positron pairs are not fully formed entities, okay, but rather unstable quantum fluctuations. They're fluctuating, they're just vibrations that scientists call what? Virtual particles. So now these particles appeared where? From the void, you know, from nowhere, magical. Uh, God made them, uh, just for the purposes of the experiment, right? The four virtual particles swirl into each other and recombine to form two new photons, which scatter off at weird angles into the detector. What are they saying? Let's illustrate this so that you get the picture. Here's the picture of what these people are saying. You can later read it more carefully. Here it is. Let's put it on this side. Okay. So this is what they're saying. You have two photons. They collide because what is colliding are really the fields, and the fields are made of photons, according to these people. That means that a magnet attracts another by throwing photons, balls at each other's, you know. And these positrons and electrons recombine because uh, they are virtual particles that come in out of nowhere. They recombine, they form the two photons, and each one of these photons and just goes off in two different directions in the, and are captured by the detector. So this is how they said they proved. This is how they observed through experiment. You know, you got to do it through experiment. This is how they observed and proved through experiment that photons collide. The photons turn into virtual particles, which recombine and create photons again. Great. That's the theory. That's their explanation. That's their physical interpretation. And gullible people like this individual here, you know, he swallows this like candies. He drinks the Kool-Aid like you would believe.